This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we have a LG Trom dryer, gas dryer, that is not heating up. So, powers up fine and set it for normal. It's turning great. Uh, everything's working as it should, but we're not getting any heat. And one thing I did <coughs> is I removed this side panel here with a little plastic piece, pried it off, I looked in there and I could see the igniter glowing. So the igniter does glow, it does work, so I know it isn't the little thermal reset button. I know it's not that because if the thermal reset is uh, blown, you won't get the orange glow from the igniter. So the igniter glows, but it doesn't fire up. And uh, I had it apart previous day, I checked the flame sensor already, I checked for voltage, coming into the gas valves and I had 50 volts, 51 volts uh, DC coming into each valve, which is correct, but still no heat. So my suspicion is, and I checked to make sure the gas valve in the back is open, my suspicion is the gas valve itself, where the primary and secondary gas coils are, is defective. I think the control is working, I think it's sending the voltage, I know the igniter is working, but it's not letting the gas flow in because I think the gas valve's just worn out. So I'm going to do a little more testing and probably replace that. So we've got the gas turned off here and I'm just going to remove the gas line and uh, just confirm that we have some gas flow coming in before we change the gas valve. just want to make sure that we get some gas coming in right here. We get that open, and open this valve. Pretty good flow. So to get into this machine, I'll press in on the uh, clip here, and there's one on this side. Clips up. There we go. And we're going to take out a couple of screws here. And there's a couple of screws in the front we're going to take out too. Let me get this off. These two guys. And these are these are uh, little like machine screws. Different thread pattern. Goes off. You got these two at the top. <clears throat> so this line, I'm just going to pull it out of these little retainers because I'm going to free this up in a second. And I'm just pushing these things apart. Get this line out. Pull these two Phillips head screws. Close that door, lift this off, get this out of the way, we're going to take off this bulkhead, and before we do that, we're going to disconnect this little guy, just pull these apart, push in here, push in on this thing with your thumb, pull apart. Pull these screws. These are Phillips head also. That. 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 I'm going to pull this one. Comes off. I'm going to lift this thing off, this bulkhead. Lift up and pull back. You gotta kind of lift the wheels off. Get this out of the way. And then we'll undo the belt and take the idler wheel pressure off, get it off the motor pulley. Reach back in here. Now push the idler, idler pulley to my left side and I can get the belt off 
I can take this whole thing out now, the tumbler. I usually use a belt to kind of help you lift it up. Get that out of the way. And here's our gas valve. So when we were checking the other day, we had a nice glow here at the igniter. And we got about 50 volts coming into these primary secondary coils, but I don't think they're functional. I don't think they're working. Already checked. This one has continuity, this high limit. This high limit has a button on it. I pressed, it has continuity. This has continuity. Um, and there's another high limit right here has continuity. The belt switch has continuity. When that belt switch doesn't work, actually the motor will stop too. So, let me show you this one again. Okay. So now we're gonna start up the system. Showing 106 volts here. And that is on DC. This is AC. Fifty volts AC. Got the igniter going. Gets nice and hot. Brand new igniter by the way. But no gas. So this is the new valve assembly. This is the part number. It's this sent from Amazon today. We're going to check its values. Okay, we're going to do a check of this valve. This is a brand new one. Let's see what value we get. So we're showing 1.85. Let's look at the old valve. This is the same one here. Let's see what we get. Value. Uh, interesting. So this old valve, this lower one, no continuity. Mm-hmm. So there's a broken wire inside this coil. Not showing any ability for the electrons to flow through. Here's the new one. Value is 1.85. Let's look at this 1.91, similar. So it looks like everything in this valve is working except that one is dead. So we're going to be removing this valve and putting in a new one. We've got it unplugged and we're going to turn off the gas. We're going to remove these two Phillips head screws. These are holding the gas pipe on. We've already turned off the gas. Phillips head screw. Another one. That one's off, and then there's also um, one underneath right here, and we're just going to use a special tool to, to get to that upward angle. We've got out that little screw. So in some dryers, it's really easy to change out these coils, but on the um, LG, you have to do the whole assembly, so it's a little harder. Not that expensive, not that bad. And probably going to get like 10, 8 to 10 years out before you even have to do this. So, not that hard. So, move this screw. That one out. So, we're going to pull the valve out. Got it. <clears throat> and we're going to try to take off this little guy, this little orifice, and put it on 
this off off of the old one and put it on the new one. It has a little tape in the way. We'll take off the tape. We're just going to take this off. It's 10 millimeters wrench, or you can use a crescent wrench. Okay, there's our 10. There's our crescent wrench. Loosen that up. Jet. Spin that off. Make sure it's clear by blowing through it. Yep. Very good. And we're going to put it on the new one. It had a little tape in the way to keep stuff from getting in there. That's cool. Spin it on by hand and give it a little bit of a turn with the wrench. That was about three quarters of a turn. So nice and tight. That looks great. And then there is tape on the other point. This is where the, that gas line hooks up. So we're going to take that tape off. Looks nice. All right. And to put it in, this will go inside the Venturi first. You can move, the, you can move this gas tube out of the way if it's in your way at all. There we go. We're going to add those screws in there. And put the old valve away. One, two, and we can get this gas valve into position. I'm sorry, the gas line. And we have two screws that go in that hold that on. You want to get those those in there nice and tight. One. Index it and feel it. Go ahead and use this one to get that in. take it for a test drive. We'll see if the gas valve opens up. I'm going to turn on the gas, turn on the power, see what we got. We got our lines hooked up. Turn on the power, start it, and then to get it going I'll use this. I'm going to watch for a glow and see if it's going to let the gas in. There's our glow. So when it gets hot enough, it should open up this valve and let gas flow in and ignite it. Let's see what happens. Hey, hey, got gas here. There we go. Yeah. Cool. Back in business. So, in this dryer, this one was actually working this one developed a break in this coil. It's just copper wire that goes around and around and around. But it probably got hot at one point and that copper wire broke. And that's why it wasn't letting in gas. So the new gas valve did the trick. We're going to put it back together. So I'm going to lift up on, got it unplugged. I'm going to lift it up, get this tumbler back in so it sits on the rear wheels and the rear bearing. Get the get the belt back kind of where it was. I'm going to reach in underneath and pull the idler wheel and get the belt underneath the motor pulley. I hope this video has been helpful to you and that you got your dryer heating again also. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe. Please like the video when you get a chance. Thanks again. Bye-bye.